No, I want to ask, answer that other question. Okay, we'll go back. I've got an opinion. Look. <laughs> she just thinks it's all about the winemaker. Hi, I'm Chef Curtis Stone. James, where are we, mate? Specifically the winery, your name Regis State. Yeah. Up in Red Hill on the Mornington Peninsula of Victoria. So one of these beautiful little coastal wine regions that we have down in the southern part of Australia. So, okay, I'm just picking this up and yep. going for it. How do you hold the glass? Oh, uh, look, it's first and foremost, whatever's most comfortable for you. I okay. think as long as you can get it into your mouth and not spill it along the way, you're, <laughs> you're off to a good start. So we don't have to be too um, fussy, but is, yeah. is it okay to hold it like that? Look, probably not. In, in Australia, we have a habit of drinking our red wines too warm, and that's only going to help Make help warm. that happen. So, so that's, that's why the stems exist. My wife would tell me it's so you don't get fingerprints on the glass. Yeah, but... well, that's a bit, that's the classic <laughs> side of it too. The <laughs> swirl, look, that's it's a good party trick. But the idea of the swirl is to just introduce some oxygen into the wine. Mm -hmm. That will unleash a whole array of fruit aromas that will start to right. come off from there. So that's helping you open up the nose, open up that sort of scent of the wine. Correct. Wunderbar. <laughs> I have a really good nose that's been designed perfectly for wine sniffing. Exactly. It's it's extra large. Bit of <laughs> You can smell it two, three times. What tends to happen there is something they call habituation, and right. you start to actually lose that sense of smell. It starts to become a little bit more muted. After that, jump in and start consuming it. I hear you soms doing sometimes when you're slurping it around <laughs> in your mouth. We're just trying to be rude. Um, no, look, the, the slurping, same thing as the swirling of the glass, but at this time it's just more to introduce oxygen in the mouth and just to get those flavours really going in there. So you're just blowing little bubbles or sucking oxygen through the wine. Even if you breathe out of your nose, you'll see that you'll get that oxygen going through your mouth and it'll start carrying all the aromas around to all the okay. nooks and crannies of your mouth. And you can breathe them through your mouth after and you'll start to probably pick up a few different flavours you didn't get before. Mm. Wow, you do. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah. I'm always embarrassed to describe a wine mm. to the winemaker because I know I'll get it all wrong, but that's really fabulous. That's the best description I think we can go for. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> drunk a lot of wine in a can, have you? I think if people are scoffing at screw caps, wine in a can is a whole new level. It doesn't offend me, like maybe a little rosé or something if well, I was going on a picnic. Yeah, I've seen little tinnies of rosé and Prosecco. It's a perfectly sealed vessel, so there's actually a lot of benefits to it. So we've had a question come in from social media. I'm taking my girlfriend to a wine tasting. What are some questions I can ask to make it sound like I know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I think the less you try, the better off you are. Yeah, I think honesty is a key. I always tell people there's no stupid questions when, yeah. you, when you're coming in and asking me. What the heck are tannins? I'm studying biochemistry at the moment. How deep do we want to go? <laughs> They're a compound that exists in everything, basically, but they exist in our grapes and they also exist in the oak barrels that we use. The flavour of them is it's that thing that dries out your mouth at the end, that yeah. little bit of astringency. Ooh, wine and food. You go first. The easiest one is always match the colours. If it's got a white flesh, looking at chicken, fish, think white. If it's yeah. got red flesh, think red. Um, there's a bit of fine tuning in between from there, but I think that's a good starting point that's for most a, that's people. That's good advice. Yeah. <laughs> I'll actually quite often taste the wine. So if I'm going to cook that night, I'll open the wine, I'll taste it, yep. and I'll be like, ooh, you know what I want to eat with that? And then I'll actually develop the dish based around the wine. It's very hard to change a wine that's in a bottle, but it's always quite <laughs> easy to create a dish around a wine and you get oh, a bit yeah. more flexibility so that way. Easy. So easy. You yeah. just don't know what it's like. <laughs> Weirdest word that you've ever heard to describe. I've probably wine. used a few in my life, actually. <laughs> I think leftover cheese on a pizza box was a descriptor I threw oh, out once. It I had know this exactly <laughs> what that tastes like too. Wet saddle was yeah, one that I heard wet recently saddle. that I was like. <laughs> The colourful descriptions tend to come from colourful people, I think, along the way. <laughs> Would you judge someone that came to your house for dinner with cast wine? Yes. Yep. Unless it was for cooking. That would be all right. Right. No, <laughs> don't bring cast wine to my house. Mate, you've demystified wine tasting for me, so thank you very much. Pleasure. I now, now I know what I'm supposed to be doing. It doesn't mean I'm going to change how I do it. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm, it's a beautiful Pinot, mate. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, really <laughs> complex. Actually, I'd judge anybody that didn't bring Main Ridge Estate <laughs> Pinot to my Thank house. you. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you. That was fantastic. Easy. Awesome.